This video is sponsored by KH Camera. With the weather getting much nicer and wedding season picking up, you're gonna be finding yourself outdoors more often. But one of the main things that is not ideal to deal with on a wedding day is a full sunny day. So let's talk about how to deal with sunny wedding days. Now the first thing you're gonna be dealing with is something I always talk about, but it has nothing to do with your camera. And that's gonna be your client communication. Again, I cannot stress this enough how you are able to communicate with your couples, how you're able to get them on your team and to trust you is the absolute most important part of wedding photography. The biggest thing that you're gonna need your couples to understand is the fact that you are the master of your domain. You know photography and you know light. Because on a day where it's full on sun, you can't just take photos wherever you want to. The end result is not gonna be as nice as you would like it to be. And when your couples understand that, when you're like, hey, we can't take a photo here, they're not gonna get mad at you. They're gonna understand, hey, John knows what he's talking about and we should trust him because he's saying the photo is gonna be bad. When you have this kind of communication with your couples, your days are so much more smooth. And if you've ever wondered why my days look so smooth in my full wedding day videos, that is why. My communication is strong with my couples and they are on my team. Because of this, we have no holdups with anything. After you have your couples on your team, next up is gonna be finding shade. This is the most important thing you'll need to do on a sunny wedding day. Now, there's multiple reasons you need to find shade, but generally harsh light just doesn't look good on photos, especially portraits. You can make it work, but honestly, I just don't like the way it looks on most portraits. On top of it not looking good, generally you're gonna have people squinting as well or trying to go find their sunglasses and that also just doesn't look good. Finding your shade at all times is the most important thing to do. And generally you can do this by looking at the buildings and the trees around and seeing where they're throwing off their shade. Also as another tip, if you find a tunnel or something of that sort, that's a great place to get some nice front lighting but also shade on your couple as well. One thing I do to help me find a shade as well is use an app. There's an app I absolutely love to use called Sunseeker that will show me where the sun is and where it will be at different times of the day. By doing this, I'm gonna be able to see where the sun's gonna set and also where the shadows are gonna be thrown off. I'll leave that down in the description below. It's a really cool app. So finding the shade is the first thing that I'm always doing when I'm in full sun. Also just waiting around for clouds if I have a slightly cloudy day is also helpful as well. But what do you do if you can't find any shade at all? And that's what my next couple of tips are about. One thing I love to do, especially when I'm doing couple portraits, is facing your couple towards each other. Now you may already know this from my 10 favorite poses. And if you've never seen that video, definitely check it out. I'll leave it in the description below. But basically you turn your couples toward each other so that the sun's not blasting them in the face and they're squinting. Now obviously you cannot do this for every single photo, but as long as the couple is looking at each other, they're not looking right at the sun, you're gonna get some better photos and reactions. This is generally my second line of defense when I'm dealing with a full on Sunday. After that as well, look for side lighting. Now the first thing you may want to do is face your couple towards the sun and take that photo because it's gonna be nicer than having them backlit because it's gonna to be too harsh. But that is gonna to be too much for them. They're gonna be blasted out in the face. They're gonna be squinting everywhere. You don't wanna do that. So the next best option is to get side lighting. This way the sun is coming from the side. They are still in a little bit of shadow, but you can deal with that in post. Also by putting them in side lighting, they're not fully shadowed. So it's really not too bad. One of the biggest tips, however, when you're doing side light is to watch out for where the shadows are falling. Generally, when you're doing side light with your couple, what will happen is one of the parties of the couple will be blocking the other person's face and landing shadow on them as well. So make sure you turn your couples in a way where the shadow from one person isn't blocking the other person's face. And that is a huge tip because it will always happen. Pay attention to your shadows on full sunny days. While we move into our next tip, this is actually a great place to talk about this video sponsor, KEH Camera. One way to deal with full on sunny days is to have the correct gear. And the easiest way to get great gear at a great price is with KEH Camera. KEH Camera is one of the best places to sell your used gear and or buy great quality used gear. If you're looking to build a full kit but you don't wanna pay the premium of brand new gear, KEH Camera is gonna help you out with that. They have a wide variety of cameras from digital to film and surely you're gonna be able to find what you're looking for. I myself have bought and also sold to KEH and it has been an amazing experience. 
Their used gear is meticulously looked after, so you're getting the best quality of used gear. And again, like I said, you can sell your gear to KGH Camera, so if you're looking to upgrade something, sell your gear off and get something new. It's as easy as jumping on a call with a KGH Camera specialist to look at your gear, you'll get an offer, and then you'll send it to them and they'll send you payment. It's actually a great process. I did it myself and absolutely love it. So make sure to use the links down in the description below for a 5% bonus on anything you buy and or sell to KEH Camera. Now, since we're talking about gear, that's what our next tip is about, using variable ND filters. So if you're not familiar with an ND filter, it's basically like sunglasses, for your camera. I know that might be the worst way to explain it, but honestly, that's how I like to come about it as a photographer. Basically, an ND filter is gonna help you be able to keep your aperture wide open, but also not have too much light going into your camera. So on a full sunny day, sometimes it's hard to be totally wide open, but if you want it for some nice portraits, that's where the ND filter will come in. Or if you have a camera like the X-T30 that only goes up to 4,000 on the shutter, you're gonna need more than that to block out all of that sun. ND filters are generally something that videographers use more often, but trust me, they can come in handy with photos as well. Now, the reason you wanna get a variable ND as well is because you can choose how dark it is, and you can adjust it depending on where you are. So if you've never used it for photos, again, I highly recommend looking at getting some ND filters. It'll change your life, really. It is great to use on full sunny days outdoors. And last but not least is your post-production. Obviously, you wanna make sure you're exposing everything correct while you're taking your photos. You don't wanna backlight too often, side light, face your couples towards each other, and look for shade. But if you're not able to do that, post-production is gonna help you out at the end. If you've watched any of my live streams, you've seen me do this before, but on photos where my couple is mainly backlit or too backlit, what I'm gonna do in Lightroom is select my subject with the select tool. Once my subject is selected, I'm able to make adjustments just to them. And what I'll generally do is raise the shadows on my couple. Now, you don't wanna raise the shadows too much. You're not trying to fully take them out of shadows. You want it to look natural on the photo, but raise them just a bit so that when you go to edit the full photo, their shadows are already raised. By doing this, you can save the couple and not have them in such harsh shadows. And on top of that, if possible, I'll also bring down the exposure on the sky to save the sky a little bit as well. Because if you're doing full on natural photography, you are gonna blow out that sky just a bit. And please let me know in the comments below if you'd love to see more on Lightroom and how to edit. I'm actually currently working on a course to help teach you all how to edit in Lightroom for wedding photography. If it's something that interests you, let me know and I'll be giving you all more information about that soon. But with these tips, you should be able to tackle sunny wedding days easily. And don't forget to get out there and create and practice every day before you get in one of these sunny situations. You don't wanna be at a wedding practicing how to do this you wanna feel like a master already when you get there. And if you wanna learn more about wedding photography, here are some videos you can check out. They'll definitely help you get some practice in before you're dealing with these wedding days coming up at this new summer wedding season. 